Hey everybody, I'm going to teach you about teaching in an interdisciplinary model and uh, we're going to do it by recording tonight. So um, please, well obviously you found it, so please listen in. Here we go. So what is interdisciplinary? Um, it was coined mostly by the middle school movement um, that happened in the late 80s and early 90s. Um, Heidi Hayes Jacobs is one of the key players in that, also a key player in um, curriculum design. Um, so if you have a chance to ever see her for a staff development, she's fabulous. She's written lots of books as well. And she says in her book that interdisciplinary is a knowledge view and a curriculum approach. So it's a way of thinking and a way of designing curriculum that consciously applies methodology and language from more than one discipline interdisciplinary, more than one discipline, to examine a central theme, a topic, an issue, a problem, or work. And the idea there is that the students benefit from having more than one discipline looking at the same central theme. It um, has been around for a very long time. We think it's very current and uh, nouveau, but really it's been around for um, you know, over a hundred years, almost a hundred years here. And there were studies, even in the 1930s, that looked at an integrated model. Um, in the 1990s, it became a very hot topic again with lots of brain, brain research going on that told us, you know, we could look at functional MRIs and see the brain when we were dealing with um, multiple subject areas or multiple disciplines looking at the same content. And so we want to engage our students with this web of knowledge idea. And we get it very easily with interdisciplinary. Some people need test scores. It's an older study, but standardized test scores even went up among 15,000 eighth grade students when they were taught in an interdisciplinary model. So there's some um, suggestion that not only is it plain old good for brains, but it shows up, is in, you know, there's evidence of it in test scores as well. So um, there are some issues, though, with, with interdisciplinary. Um, doing interdisciplinary instruction, the carefully thought out, judiciously applied, it's great for kids, but that takes time and energy to collaborate. You will find this out as you're working on this project, that it takes an enormous amount of time to discuss all of your plans with your colleagues. Um, when curriculum and standards change, all of a sudden now an interdisciplinary unit isn't um, as valuable as it was when it matched with standards and curriculum. And inevitably, once you get an interdisciplinary unit going, one of your staff will change. Um, your colleague from science that you were working on you know, for years up and retires on you, and now you have to train in someone new. Um, so consider that as you're the newbies coming into interdisciplinary instruction that it's hard for staff members to accept you in that because they need to really train you in on these complex units. And then there can be a difference between real connections, things that actually matter for students, and then this what we call window dressing. Let me explain this. This is um, a quotation from um, Heidi Hayes Jacobs' book um, that I referenced earlier, and she says, it's fine, for example, for a class to devote a specific block of time daily to reading, discussing, and writing about Tom Sawyer. That would be a central theme, Tom Sawyer as a theme. And the book runs the risk of being swallowed if placed in a 12-week interdisciplinary extravaganza during which students compute the area of fence boards, board fence that Tom hoodwinked his friends into whitewashing, create geographic relief maps of Hannibal, Missouri, or study the formation of stalagmites and stalactites. Remember Tom and Becky in the cave? <laughs> or dress up in overalls and straw hats for Tom Sawyer days. It's not that any of that is bad. That's all really fun. But if this is an eighth grade or a 10th grade unit, having students figure out, you know, the area of fencing is not a very complex mathematical idea. Or having them make a geographic relief map of Missouri Again, not standards-based, and although fun, dressing up in overalls and straw hats really doesn't have much to do with the actual learning that's happening. I'm not saying that you can't do these fun things, dressing up, having parties, going on field trips. I'm just saying they should be extraneous. They should be extra 
bonus elements and you should have really strong core um, standards based content that connects. So here's another person who has some comments about that idea, um, Susan Drake in Planning Integrated Curriculum. Um, the um, Association of, I forget, ASCD, I know that term and I'm sorry, right off the top of my head I'm not pulling that up, but ASCD um, is a really strong resource for you. Get involved in their newsletters, get, get some of your information. It has to do with curriculum de design? I don't know. Um, anyway, good people. She says, it only makes sense to teach through connections. Yes, unless the connections don't make sense. There's a tendency in some thematic instruction to push connections beyond the logical and natural into the realm of the strained and artificial. At this point, one is connecting not for the sake of academic reinforcement, but merely for the sake of connecting. Connections that aren't so much intellectually compelling as cute or clever can transform the classroom from a place of learning into a very dull theme park want to give you that warning that you all need to be advocates for your subject area. You need to make sure that the art class is, or the art component, is true to the level of art that you want to be teaching. Students should not just be coloring or painting. In math, students should not just be counting um, or working out, you know, um, word problems based on Antarctica. It, it needs to have some sort of compelling element um, that matches truly with the theme that's being taught. So you'll need to find central themes that are um, conducive to the learning of all of your topics or all of your contents. Um, so fight for that, please. Here are some steps in getting to the point of having an interdisciplinary unit. You're going to, as a team, determine a theme. You're going to brainstorm some meaningful content links, you know, hey, what works and what doesn't. You're going to come up with essential questions or GIOs. Forget for now essential questions, don't worry about that. GIOs is where you're at. You'll need to come up with general instructional objectives, broad concepts that each of you can contribute to. So when it says shared, you'll need to make sure that at least two of you, if you have three in your group or four, at least two of you are sharing that GIO. Um, a shared GIO is not one <laughs> one subject area addressing it. You'll need at least two, but you don't have to have everyone in your group addressing all of the GIOs. You can pair them up or do something. Shared just means at least two of you are working on that. Eventually you'll determine some assessments. Maybe they'll be shared. If you're sharing GIOs, it makes sense that they might be shared assessments, or maybe not. You'll also plan out day-to-day -day activities. Um, we won't be going into full lesson plans on this, but just a sketch of what's happening day to day in each of the different classes. And then you'll go back and you'll look at it and say, okay, where else can we make more connections? Where can we make this more vi vibrant and helpful to our students? For now, we're going to worry about developing a theme and figuring out some decent, um, meaningful content links. So here are some things that we mean by theme. Existing subject curriculum can be theme like myths and legends or colonial life. You'll see that in some of the examples that you have. It could be a major social issue or a problem, the environment, prejudice, those kinds of things. You'll see that in some of the examples. It could be more of um, exploratory elements like who am I or jobs and careers. And it might be super broad process concepts like change or cycles. Um, it also can be just really timely things and silly things like the Olympics or chocolate or amusement parks. Again, assuming that the content you're teaching lends itself to adding something to that theme that, you know, you can look at chocolate in class and how it's made and how it's marketed and um, how it's changed through history or how it, you know, caused major conflicts in um, Madagascar, I don't know, wherever it is that you can contribute to that theme in a true way in your content area, then you're on to a decent theme. Okay. For this assignment, you do have a rubric, and um, we'll go into that more. I just wanted to point out that it exists. Um, there are many things asked of you in this unit plan, all of which you're seeing in the examples you have. Um, again, we'll come back to this. This is just a note that it exists. Make sure you look for that rubric.
and more on the rubric. Make sure you look for that. It's in the syllabus and in Moodle. All right, lastly, while you are um, using this time to collaborate, um, this is my direction for you. Um, spend some time, maybe set a time limit, share what you love about your area of licensure, what excites you about teaching it, um, and share that with each other. Sometimes um, you sharing what you really like about your subject will trigger a thought from one of your colleagues about how they might connect with that. So um, it does help when we find a theme or a central idea that the whole team can be passionate about. Number two, I want you to look through some of the past projects. I know you've been doing that, but what do you see that you like? What's interesting? Is there a jumping off point from one of those projects? Um, maybe they're doing an era or a country or uh, you know, a social issue, and you could take a different social issue or country or era and, and work with that with your subjects. Um, number three is pretty important. Take some time to look at each other's standards. Go to the Minnesota Department of Ed website click on the standards for business, look at the national standards, look and see what the other subjects, um, you know, what the topics are, what the levels are within your colleagues' um, standards, because you'll need to decide on a grade level for this project. So you'll all need to choose 11th grade or you'll all need to choose 8th grade and teach to that level and to those standards. While I'm not here, go ahead and write down any questions you have for me. There will be time for questions when I return and we'll work out um, all of those when I get back. Thanks a lot. Please work hard until I um, arrive. Thank you for um, working this out with me, and uh, I will see you soon. Bye-bye.